thank you for joining me on the segment today because I know just throughout the, throughout everything that's happening around the world right now, and um, I know your schedule is Bananas. crazy. Yeah, but but I wanted to I wanted to make time to come and, and chat with you about whatever we're gonna talk about. Oh, oh definitely, I, and I definitely appreciate it. The first thing I, I kind of want to dive into before we dive into some really, uh, I guess, some really serious matters. Mm -hmm. um, talk. I want. I want. I want to hear about your. Uh, well, you explain a bit more about your, your, uh, your college education. Yeah. I know sure. many. I know many people. Many people may not know this, but you have a yeah. degree from the University of Rhode Island yes. in business administration. Yes. And yeah. I say, and and I bring that up because, which we're going to get into a little bit later. You have a history of building things yeah. from the ground up, mm -hmm. establishing a solid foundation yes. in order to mm -hmm. in order to have a sust sustained success. So talk a bit about how and why you started you, you got a degree in that. Yeah, well, I I always had aspirations of being like a CEO. I I thought I would, you know, be a CEO of like a Fortune 500 company. And um when my college coach talked to me about getting into college coaching, uh, so that's why I got the business admin. Uh, I wanted to do international business. I got a minor in that, but uh, ended up going with more of a broader scale at Rhode Island with it. And I wanted to be able to just have touch everything, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of, you know, uh, everything that is entrepreneurship, everything that comes with business. And so that's how I, I went down that path. You know, it's funny because 16 years later, I'm in my profession. I am the CEO of this program. And so I uh, just graduated from the University of Rhode Island, was born and raised in the Bahamas, came over to the United States to play college basketball, uh, finish up at Rhode Island, and then I end up getting my master's. People don't know this, in, in education at Arkansas Pine Bluff. So uh, one thing that was cool for me, I got a opportunity to experience PWI and HBC, right. which was both unique and different for me. SG Row. Yes. I just thought about that. Where yeah. uh, where'd you play it? Yep. At Arkansas Pine Bluff. Okay. Yep. How, Alpha Chi Sigma, how, shout out. <laughs> no, definitely. How, how, how was that experience? It, it, it was great. You know, I, I, I did the grad program, so it wasn't as intense. Um, when I was in college, you know, my coach never talked to us about, you know, getting into any type of Greek life for extra yeah, and, and at Rhode Island, I don't know that it was, it, you know, I don't know that that was a big deal so much there. So, um, and so I wasn't really aware of it like I am now, right. you know. But, but when I was at UAPB, um, I enjoyed being a part of another team mm -hmm. because when you play sports, you're a part of a team. So I thought that that was cool, and then. Um, I got in, and immediately I was I was over the next line coming up. So, you know, just being able to do that, it was it was cool. Prior to getting to to, uh, yeah. to Jacksonville yeah. University, I've been all you, over. Oh yeah, prior to getting Jacksonville University, you were a um, you were a career assistant coach. Yeah, but you you weren't just a mediocre assistant coach. <laughs> I, um, I know your credentials were. Um, you had very high credentials. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You were named nation's top recruiter, yeah. top assistant coach, yeah. and things of that nature. Um, just talk about talk about um, that and 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 how and how did that mold you to becoming a, uh, your getting your first gig? Yeah, I just man, I, you know, my dad was a coach, and uh, my mom an educator, and so anybody that knows coaching, that's what you are. You're an educator and coach, amongst other things. And so I guess it was inevitable, um, and, I, and I never really thought deep into it until my college coach brought it up. Like I said, I thought I was going to go in corporate America, not sports. I, I, I love it every day I wake up, not saying I have to, but using the words that I get to uh, do it. And, and then anything I do, I just I want to be organic with it, and I, I want to give it my all. And so. With that came, you know, the recognition and me being able to move up the charts the way I did. Um, speaking of moving up the charts, um, your first two seasons at Jackson at yeah. Jacksonville University, you won, I think, twenty five games. Yeah. Your first two years. Yeah. And your third year. And your third year, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You ended up making the NCAA tournament with, yeah. uh, with those yeah. ladies. Yep, and won 20. Right. Yeah. You're now entering your third season yeah. with Ole Miss. <laughs> uh, your right. first, first two seasons, you guys won... It was rough know, again. 14, 15 yeah. games. Yeah. And you're entering your third season yeah. with your first full recruiting class. Yeah. Um, just uh, uh, talk about that. And this, to me, this goes back to your, your business admin mm -hmm. degree. You, you, yeah. you, you have the experience of and you have the experience and the, and the, and the want to and know-how of, of building from the ground yeah. up and knowing the importance of it. Well, when I, when I accepted the opportunity here, um, one of the questions that I asked was, what do you all see, what does success look like for you? And after hearing what they said, I, I, I said, well, here's how we're gonna get to that part, that business part, you know? I said, the first year I have to assess the situation because I got the job pretty late. I said, second year, I wanna build a foundation. And then the third year is the proof of concept. So what that means is those first two years, did I assess it correctly, my staff and I, and did, did we lay the proper foundation? And I think that um, we've done that clearly with you know, all 15 of our student athletes with 3.0 or higher GPA, you know, three of them with a 4.0 GPA this past semester, signing the number one transfer uh, in the country, as the number one recruiting class in the SEC, number 13th in the country, and then signing the number one transfer. You know, those were, people see this, this where we're at right now, but these were in the plans, in the blueprint mm -hmm. from year one. Right. Um, but you have to go through the storm. And I, and I give the story all the time. You know, when you get on that rough flight and there's turbulence, but when you break through that, crowd, that cloud and it's a beautiful scene, scenery, you know, that's what we're heading to. We're getting ready to land. We're not quite there yet, but, you know, we're getting, we've gotten past that rough s storm and we have a nucleus, a group of young ladies that I retained and we retained and ones that we recruited and we're, we're excited about it. Coach, not only are you, not, not only are you balancing the, uh, are you building, yeah. you know, the foundation from the, from the, from year one to year three, mm -hmm. you, you also have, to ha you're also having to battle, you're, you're currently in the state of Mississippi. Yep. And, you, and you're having to battle this Confederate, this Confederate flag situation yeah. that's happening, yeah. that's happening yeah. for the state. Yeah. How, how difficult ha, has that been going into mm -hmm. these young ladies' homes and yeah. having to speak to their, to their family? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to say that when I first accepted the job, I don't know, I know I didn't do a great job studying the history of the state, but I count it as a blessing because I feel like I would have been intimidated to take on the challenge had I known what I know now. Really? <laughs> uh, just with, you know, the, the, the flag and, and, you know, everything that uh, black Mississippians have experienced, you know, it, it's tough to, to hear and, and bear. So we, we usually get front-handed with that question, um, but, you know, and I want to say this with, first of all, you know, I'm black and I'm in Mississippi and uh, I don't think it's easy to be black anywhere right now. Um, there are a lot of band-aids that are being taken off and a lot of feelings that we have all suppressed uh, during these times. But my experience in Oxford has been incredibly enjoyable. You know, the, the people, the community, um, and so the time is now to make the change. It, it, it has been forever, but I know since I'm here, I'm gonna use my platform because the time is now because that flag does not represent the people that I've come in contact with. And, and so uh, better late than never. Right. <laughs> Obviously, right. this should have been happening. <laughs> right. uh, but you know, people, come and they get that same experience. And obviously they trust me, these parents. Um, a lot of the players that we have are African-American. I look like them, my staff, right. we look like them. Mm -hmm. And so there's a comfort in knowing that. And um, you know, they wanna come and they wanna, they want to win and they wanna see me have success. You know, we, 
did a stat the other day. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the 2%. They're 2% of, of African-American black women that are head coaches and ADs in Division One. Mm -hmm. You and know? I, yeah, and I saw the four today. Uh, one's at, uh, she's at LSU. Yep. Uh, Mississippi State just hired yes. the, um, the head coach yeah. to replace. Well, in the SEC, it's six of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's incredible. And shout out to them for, you know, diversity and inclusion. I think people uh, think that it, that's something that's just natural. No, you have to be intentional about it. You know, you have to be intentional about diversifying your group regardless of how it is. I know I am. You know, you look at my complete staff. Right. We're pretty diverse, you know, from race to gender to age to, you know, backgrounds. And, but I was intentional about that. Because everyone has, everyone has their uh, just various perspectives on things yeah. and just, and, and just how to handle different situations. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yes, the time is now yes. in short. In short, <laughs> the, 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 the time is, uh, the time is now. <laughs> Talk about what were your feelings? Did you know you were the first black yeah. coach for, uh, for Ole Miss women's basketball? I did. Uh, again, being a part of the 2%, there are a lot of times where we all are the first. I was the first at Jacksonville. Really? You know, so mm -hmm. I, I, I was well aware of that. And you know, I carry that with, with honor, you know, because, um, I, because I know that that provides inspiration to my players. Uh, to the people that work around me, and um, and and I, for people to have someone that looks like them, mm -hmm. you know, in this space, mm -hmm. I, I know it's inspiring to to them and everybody I come in contact with. And coach, you have so much. Um, I, I've had the pleasure of watching you the past several years. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Shout so, and kick and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so much passion and yeah. enthusiasm yes. on the yes. on the on the yes. sidelines. How. And, and I know that you know that it, 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 this is a growing, pro this is a building yeah. process. Got to have a mm -hmm. solid foundation. But how tough, how, hmm. how tough were the first two years, yeah. knowing that you weren't where you wanted to be, <clears throat> but you still got that competitive spirit yeah. you know, in you? Well, I'll tell you this, uh, <laughs> boy. Um, you know, a wise friend of mine um, said, you know, when you, when you lose hope, hate creeps in. Hate, hate creeps in, you know, when you lose hope. And so I was intentional about being hopeful and keeping my staff hopeful. It's nothing like being on that ride, though. Um, being transparent, it was excruciating, you know. It, there were tough times. There were times where there was doubt, doubt that creeped in. There were times where, you know, I was incredibly just down and, and wanted to give up. Um, but but I kept remembering my purpose and why I do this and and that you know you plant seeds so you know in due time it'll come and so just being faithful you know because I think that that's important and staying with it and and I think it it has tested me and built my character and I think adversity does that and I'm grateful for it now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and just trying to m remain grateful through the journey. You know, sometimes you want to wait till it's good. Then you want to say, man, I'm glad that happened. But having a, just a perspective. Mm -hmm. The WNBA. Yep. And those ladies. One player in particular is Maya Moore. Yep. Like this stuff just go, it goes unnoticed. Even the WNBA draft mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. with the pandemic in, in place wasn't televised. Yeah. Yet when the NFL no, dropped. No, it was. But it's just one as clean as the NFL. Okay, right, <laughs> right, right, right. And so and so when the NFL draft happened, you know, yeah. people people were like, oh, finally we're gonna have some like some television. And people were like, no, 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 we had like sports happened yeah, last week. Exactly. If like if, if you were watching, but you know, players like um, uh, Maya Moore and and more recently, uh, her last name is Cloud. I yeah, Natasha Cloud. Natasha Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, they've been talking. To, they've been just like they were like, "Hey, we're like we're sitting out." Yeah, many many of them now. We're sitting out. We're sitting mm -hmm. out this season because more important things are happening are happening around the world right now mm -hmm. that we feel like that we can um, make a huge impact on. Yeah. What like what what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I just think it's incredible. I mean, this this is the time. I don't think black people have felt liberated the way they do. Um, you know, th this pandemic is like a quiet storm. 
because it's a perfect storm. And I say that because although this is unfortunate times for many, uh, families are being restored. You know, people are being able to spend time with, with their spouses and partners and people are figuring out how to survive, you know, and picking up new hobbies and talents. Um, and everyone was able to witness the murder of George Floyd. And like Dave Chappelle said, like, we didn't care who it was. He just happened to be the one. Right, right. That, that got murdered and everyone had a chance to see it. And this time you can't say, I didn't, with Ahmaud Arbery, you know, you didn't get the whole video. You That's know, how it is. with, with a bunch of other people, you, you didn't get Sandra Bland, you know, you Brianna didn't Taylor. Get, yeah, you didn't get the whole, but with this one, we were able to watch this. This was like reality TV. And, and quite frankly, you know, black people are tired. Um, and, 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 and for the first time, we've been empowered to speak up because many times before, uh, a lot of black people didn't feel like they could speak up with fear of lo losing their jobs or being judged or... Now no one, is, no one has work. So, but, but so, now, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and now even our allies, you know, white people are, are, are speaking up. And so who has time right now, this minute, to really divulge themselves in sports. These young women are professionals. So if they're gonna do something, they're gonna give their all. And so more power to them. And I don't judge people that go and play. Right. But more power to them because they wanna give their all in something. And right now, uh, these matters are at the forefront and, and we should support them. What are some things you're expecting um, in your third season with your, yeah. with your program? <laughs> Boy. National Championship? <laughs> Nine year three, but it's coming. Okay. Uh, you know, just really excited, like you said, to, to have that full group um, that, that we wanted. We've, as a staff, worked extremely hard to, to get this group together. And so, you know, just looking forward to spending time with them and looking forward to winning. You know, losing sucks. Um, so just have an opportunity to get out there and have some success on the basketball court because, you know, everyone wants to be around a winner. Uh, being able to, to be a bridge for the community, you know, hopefully we can um, get through this COVID and learn how to deal with it. I don't think it's going to go away, but learn how to coexist with it and be able to you know, put together an environment that people want to come and it's a hot ticket. Um, really looking to put, make our mark and let people know that we're here and uh, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Definitely. Coach, um, you mentioned earlier that it's, you guys have six, um, six yeah. um, black female coaches in the SEC. In SEC yeah. Do you guys um, communicate with each other? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're all and, friends. Yeah, and what, what, are those, what are those talks like, especially with, uh, with Coach Staley, Don Yeah, Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, Don has been a mentor for me way before this. Um, when she coached at Temple, I played at Rhode Island. So, like, I played against her um, as she was coaching. Uh, it's just been great, you know, just... We, we understand the place that we have and, and we just support each other, uplift each other. A lot of us were already friends or acquaintances before we got into the SEC. So I would like to think it's like a little sorority, you know, but, um, but it's competitive when we suit up against each other yeah, now. Definitely. But, but when we're not, we just try to like, just be there for each other and anything that, just having a, a, a group of women that, understand completely because they're in the SEC what we're going through and uh, it, it's been refreshing for me being a being a new blood coming in and they're just really taking me in and kind of showed me the ropes and, and and you know what I like too sometimes like if it's a rough a rough patch or something we all get together and um, you know support each other so I appreciate that Coach, with the, with the Black Lives Matter movement that's happening around <clears throat> the world right now, what is one change that you would like to see yeah. um, happen? 
You know, I mean, I think I'm seeing it now. I think, I think people are having conversations um, that are difficult. And, you know, it's difficult because, you know, for the white race, there's a lot of shame that goes with it. People that are remorseful, they're, they're embarrassed, you know? It's, it's no different than, than if you were to see, you know, a, a, a black man robbing a store. And you're like, oh man, like why? Right. You get right, what I'm saying? Right. So that that's the same approach a lot of them are having, even though there are others that are like, that's not my fault, and don't want any accountability. I think healthy conversations are happening. Um, people having to think about diversity inclusion for the first time. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Be seriously, because yes. they're being held accountable. People uh, recognizing people and seeing color. You know, I just think it's so offensive when people say, I don't see color. How could you not? I I'm black, like I'm black, I'm, black. I'm right I, here. I, I see you, you're white, or you may be Samoan or whatever, Indian. I see that and, and I wanna learn about it and I wanna be educated about it. Uh, offensive, you know, it's offensive to be here in, in Mississippi and see a Confederate, uh, peace in the, in the flag, you know, of, of a place that you represent. Mm -hmm. And so seeing the, meat, the needle being moved with that, you know, it's just, it's, it's everything that, that's going on right now, the, the, the conversation about police, you know, and understanding, you know, what defunding the police means, whether you like it or not, just educating yourself on it. Me just educating myself on Juneteenth. I did not know about the Tulsa ma massacre, you know? Like, being able to empower my young women and, and for the first time, you know, I've never had a coach. No one has ever talked about registering to vote. We have 100% all of our girls registered to vote today. You know, just empowering them, giving them that power. Um, these are all good things that are coming out of this. You know, this is not in vain. And it's not dying down anytime soon. Uh, laws are being passed, you know, rules are being changed, and it's and it's important because, you know, we want America to be inclusive for everybody, you know, and 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 people understanding why Colin Kaepernick took a knee, <laughs> you know. So these healthy conversations, man, are just necessary. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. Coach, um, before I let you go, I just want the people that are watching this to know that as of right now, it's been 101 days since Breonna Taylor has been murdered and no one has been arrested. Yeah. Um, yeah. Breaks my heart. Coach, I appreciate your Thank time you. and your energy today. Thank and, you. And um, I look forward to watching the 2020 uh, Omens Rebels. Thank you so much. I got the power when it's time to make a change. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog.